Hey guys, how's it going? Today we're gonna be talking about how to set up a basic scene inside of Redshift, inside of Houdini with Redshift, and we're also going to um, make a cool render of this with um, a basic procedural texture. Okay, so first things first, let me turn off our model here, and I'm gonna bring in an RS dome. So RS domes basically, you know, just a basic dome that we're gonna add an HDRI to it. So I'm gonna, this is the lion and we're gonna just use some of my HDRI assets on compositing, my textures, HDRs. Okay, let me just, so we're gonna RS light and we wanna say select shader and a dome. I'm pasting my HDRI set here and I'm just gonna select a studio dome okay so right now we've got a studio dome set up um, and I like to come into my light and disable it from my viewport um, and if we turn off disable from background we're not gonna see it on render but I'll show you guys that afterwards okay so we've got a basic light and I'm gonna set two RS lights as well just simple lights so that's one and here on our light settings we can choose whether we want a re rectangle or disc or whatever a sphere is something i like to use because it's probably uh most accurate to real life and i'm gonna turn off the visibility so that when we render we're not seeing a blob like so that the renderer can see it I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna select look through light and look through our RS light and lock our camera. That means that right now I'm the light. So I'm moving and I became the light. So if I place it right here and I turn that off, you see that my light is right there. I'm gonna copy, paste, select this button right here and move it so that we have a three point light system. Um, I'm gonna come into my first light and this is gonna be my most intensity and my second is gonna be my less intensity so I'm gonna turn it down to a 50 and we wanna have a contrast of a little bit of color so I'm gonna set this one to be my cold one and this is gonna be my warm light meaning our warm light is a little bit stronger than the cold light so this is a warm setup all right so we've got our two lights we've got our dome and now we're gonna set up our our object so if we come into here I imported an OBJ of my lion and I want to test my UVs to make sure that my UVs are properly set. So we're going to say UV quick shade. So with my UV quick shade on, just one thing is I'm going to turn off the lights for now just because I don't like the, the way the lights affect my geometry when I'm working. Um, before when I'm not lighting so here's what my UVs look like now do these UVs work with the texture that my lion has well let's see my models my image this is model 34 model 34 select this come in here boom and I'm going to select my display my diffuse channel so with my diffuse channel you can see that my UVs do work with the texture that I have for this light okay so we're set to create a texture now when I set the material I'm not gonna be able to see that but it doesn't matter because we know the UVs work let's plug this in come into our material network so inside of our material network we're gonna set redshift material and this is gonna be my base texture. And then I'm gonna set RS material. And then the RS material, we connect to the surface. Pull this tab here down, and this is the diffuse color. Here is where I'm gonna set RS texture. Now make sure in Houdini, you can't just say texture. So if, if we bring in a texture, this is a mantra texture. You have to say, Excuse me, you have to say RS texture, okay? So with the RS texture, this is my diffuse channel. Let's come in here and select my diffuse. 
Um, let's see, we've got a roughness for this. We have a displacement and we have a refraction. So, uh, I mean an HDRI. So I'm gonna select my displacement. Let's place my displacement down here. And the way you create displacement in Houdini is RS displacement, put this displacement here and we, we connect it here. But first, I wanna see what my model looks like before displacing it. And then I'm gonna create an RS bump because you always wanna have bumps in this kind of imagery. And I'm gonna show you guys a cool trick is I'm gonna RS color correct and I'm gonna input my diffuse channel here, make it black and white by reducing the saturation to a zero and plugging this into my bump. Now I know for sure that a height scale of one is really large in redshift. So I'm gonna leave a height scale of 0.1 and connect this into my bump channel. Boom. So another thing that I wanna have that I know off the bat that I what I, that makes things like this look nicer is an RS ambient occlusion pass. RS ambient occlusion and my RS I a uh, AO and let's test this out. Come in here, my file on my material. I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna select my base texture. Now with my base texture selected, I'm gonna come to my out and I'm gonna select Redshift. Redshift render. So this is what I use for rendering out and this is my IPR. My IPR meaning that if I split this on my top and bottom, and I come here and I come into my render, this is the IPR, Redshift IPR. So if I change this to IPR, hello, then IPR hello shows up here. So you can have multiple IPRs with, um, you know, different configurations. So we're gonna create a camera, come here, cam, boom, and then we're gonna tell it that we wanna render with camera one, if I come here, Select that, camera one. So now we're rendering, with, we're gonna render with this camera. On my view, I'm gonna set this to 1920 by 1080. And I want to make sure that on my de redshift parameters, my depth of field is turned on. But that's my next step. Now let's go ahead and save. Just test, it. just to make sure everything works. And right now I wanna double check uh, okay, cool. Let's hit render. And we're not seeing anything because my camera, my lights are turned off. Turn on my lights, and there we go. We have a basic image render in here okay so first things first let me disconnect from the camera and you can see my cameras right here my lights i'm gonna pull them back a little bit pull this one back a little bit as well and then we're gonna select our dome and i don't want to see it in my background now the next thing that we're gonna set up is Let's double check what our dome looks like if we transform it under rotation. Okay, that doesn't do that much of a change. Here, it does do a little bit more of a change. You can see it like that, my light's coming from here, and let's see how this is going to affect it. And then that looks nice. Um, so as you can see, um, there's a bunch of things happening here. Obviously, my my light isn't, my RS dome isn't the best, so I'm gonna swap that for something different. Maybe something like uh, RS dome eight. Okay, and then let me see, shader. Light transform. Not, I'm not seeing a huge change, and that's because of the power of my lights.
and then we can change the size of the light to like a 2 Okay, so the next thing is let's put our camera on a cool angle. So something like that is kind of cool. Okay, and the next thing we're gonna do is on my, I'm gonna come in here on my object, my redshift, my tessellation and displacement, and I'm gonna enable my displacement to a point zero one. And then I'm gonna stop the render, come here into my material, and then on our bump, we are gonna reduce it to a point zero one. And now we can place our displacement. Actually, Let's test this out first. Okay, so now you can see that it has much less bump. If I increase this to a 0.1, you will see the difference immediately. See that? 0.05 should do the trick for now. Um, then we can add one more texture to run to, to help our roughness. So our texture. Um, let's just see if we can use something default from Houdini so something like uh, concrete roughness on our reflection roughness and I'm gonna apply uh, RS color correct to this and control the gamma so this is gonna control how much of it is actually taking place so a zero, fully reflective, a little bit, a little bit of roughness and variation on our reflections, right? Okay, um, the next step will be to add our displacement to this and maybe reduce the amount of reflection that this is catching a tiny bit. So once we plug in our displacement, it might get a little bit slow, so I usually stop my render place the reflection save and then we're gonna see it in action okay so now we've got displacement in there as well as our bump now we've got displacement and bump all right so the next step is um i'm gonna stop the render we're gonna come in here and we're gonna, we're gonna set up our c depth so come out of our locked camera we're gonna select this right here Z hit Z on your keyboard and then this right here controls where the Z depth is going to hit so I'm gonna pull this back a little bit so that our C depth is mainly focused on this part of the image the intensity is gonna be here everything else is gonna be a little bit less so the the mouth right here is not gonna have as much is a little bit more blurred okay so we're gonna enable our this our depth of field and we're gonna turn on our tessellation and displacement so the more this goes up the less displacement you'll get the, the, the lower it comes the more displacement the geometry is going to have we're gonna come into our camera we're gonna lock the camera we're gonna select make sure that it's centered save and render And that's looking pretty cool. Okay, so um, this is the last step that we're gonna do is coming to our out. We're gonna select our ROP network and we're gonna select which camera we're rendering with. So we're using camera one. On the output, on our comment, this is the file path where we're gonna kick out the image. So I'm just gonna kick this out to my desktop. So just say test dot. EXR is probably the best 
but you need to select the file extension that you're gonna use so png or jpeg or whatever you want but exr is the best way to go um, we're not doing AUVs here because that's going to be on a different tutorial but we're going to come into our redshift we are, do not need motion blur but we probably want to have um, I'm going to add global illumination as a brute force um, and we are going to add more samples to these so we're going to go from 50 to 100 samples in this image and we are ready to render the current frame I'm not rendering out a sequence so when you're ready you can hit render to disk now the last thing that i want to do before rendering to disk is check out how much um, of an effect my global illumination will have on the image and you can see it's not a huge effect but it does help okay and I'm gonna come here to my OBJ, to my camera, come out of my camera, and tweak my Z depth a little bit. My depth of field. something like that's pretty cool and then my, my material I'm gonna do an RS color correct on my I'm gonna do an RS color correct on my diffuse and just bring the gamma down a little bit it's probably a lot okay crank up my contrast Let's see okay and then I'm gonna stop that come out come here and render to disk all right so this is kind of a basic introduction of how I go about rendering still frames inside of Houdini and Redshift. Uh, we'll be back with more. There's a lot more to learn on the, a on the AOV side of things, on particles or splines, if there is anything in particular that you guys want to check out, whether it is motion blur or dialing your camera parameters on the effects, please leave a comment and we'll be back with more.